Hello and welcome back. I've turned up the music for this video for uh, a very good reason. Uh, we, in the last video, we uh, sorted out the Basilican Forest and now we have uh, the elves as an emiss uh, as a uh, ally, which is why they're there, and the allied supply crates. On it. Put stuff in there. There we go. Turning crafting. Turning. Ooh, turning some rooms. Mm. Oh, and assign novice rooms. I'll make them happier. And let's see what I've got. Ooh, all deep mushrooms. Because I'm not using them right now. Generous as always, Warden. Okay. And now let's talk to some people before we move on to uh, the next bit. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? You know about Liliana and me? I've seen the way she looks at you, the familiarity with which you speak, how she always finds a way to place herself next to you. Um, so what were you going to say about us? I've noticed your blossoming relationship. And I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Neliana is a remarkable girl, sincere and guileless. And she has opened her heart to you. I would not like to see her hurt. I'd never hurt Liliana. Not intentionally, no. But there is great potential for tragedy here. For one or both of you. You are a Grey Warden. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. I can handle my responsibilities and my relationships. Love is ultimately selfish. It demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? What am I supposed to do? Tell Liliana to go away? You may have to, to save one or both of you unnecessary anguish later on. What do you know of love? You never left the circle. I know more about love's enchantment and its perils than I care to tell. But perhaps this is one lesson that cannot be taught. I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. Mm. Right, let's, ha let's talk a bit more to win. What's on your mind? Uh, I'd like to ask you something about the circle. I will answer to the best of my ability. Uh, how did you become a mage? People don't become mages. They are born mages. The talent just surfaces later. But you are asking how I ended up at the circle. I was brought there by the Templars, just like many of the other apprentices. I don't remember very much. I was very young then. What about your family? I didn't have a family. I never knew my real parents. My earliest memory was of hiding in a hayloft on a farm, trying to keep warm. I was found, and the farmer's wife was kind enough not to send me away. but. They had children of their own, and I was never made to feel welcome. The eldest son was the worst. He was always calling me a stray, and throwing anything he could get his hands on at me. And I don't know how it happened, but one day, he just found his hair on fire. Fortunately, there was a large trough nearby. Was he seriously hurt? I had singed his hair and eyebrows but injured little other than his pride. Who knows what they would have done to me had he been more seriously hurt. Thankfully, all I had to endure was a few nights locked in a cold barn with a bowl of water and a crust of bread. The Templars arrived several mornings later. A terrible experience for a child. The barn kept me safe from the village children, 
and the stones they would hurl at me. I was afraid, yes, but it could have been much worse. I'll never forget the moment the Templars led me into the entrance hall of the tower. I had never seen anything so grand in my life. I stopped being afraid then. I knew I was home. That's a great story. Well, that's about all there is to my tale. That's how I came to the circle. What was life like in the tower? I would be lying if I said it was easy. First, there were rules, and we were constantly watched to make sure we behaved appropriately. Then there was the study of magic. We had to cast the spells just so, control the effects completely. A single word spoken incorrectly, a gesture out of sync, and lack of focus. And we needed to have perfect focus, or we would be in danger. At least you hear the dangers of magic from the circle. Without the circle and my mentors, I would not have been where I am today. And there was joy in life at the circle. The joys of fellowship in knowing that you were not alone in your struggles. In spite of everything, I was happy in the tower, and I loved it. Uh, there's nothing else I want to discuss right now. When we level up a bit, uh, when we get her to like us a bit more, uh, we could, we should be able to open up our conversation a bit more. Okay, so let's go talk to Liliana. I'm here for you. Yep. We need to talk. Of course. What would someone like you be doing in, in Lothering's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? You know, a beautiful, charming woman like yourself. And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? Mm -hmm. Um, so, can we get back to the Lothering now? <laughs> you would abandon your Grey Warden duties to seduce an initiate into forgetting Chantry and Maker? I might. It depends on the initiate. There are certainly many to choose from. I was never one of them, though. I was only affirmed. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Um, affirmed? We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. What did you do before? I was a traveling minstrel in Orlé. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. And one last thing. I was just thinking about what happened to the elves, and I... I'm reminded of a song sung to me many years ago. It was when my mother died, and this wise elven woman comforted me and told me that we shouldn't fear death or hate it. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. That's comforting. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving. <laughs> 